everybody tonight. Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm excited to be here. Amen. Pastor Jackie, Sister Pam, Sister Rama, Brother Joseph, Brother Josh. Amen. Good evening, AGK family. Man, I pray that everybody is having a tremendous day. And I just hope that everything is going well for you by God's grace. And so just looking forward to spending a little bit of time with you. Amen. Good evening, Minister Michelle. Amen. Hola, que tal? Amen. <laughs> Amen. It is definitely good to be with everybody. Sister Cherie, good evening. Amen. 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 Well, let's just lean into prayer. Amen. Sister Vicki, amen. Good to have you with us tonight. Amen. Father, we thank you for your grace. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your favor and for your wisdom. Thank you for the power of your word. We celebrate the birth of your son, Jesus, who is the Christ. We are so excited about this time to celebrate our Lord and Savior, your Christ, your Messiah who has come, amen. We're not waiting for the Messiah to come, amen. He has come. And so we thank you for the power of your word. And as you reveal your word to us tonight, I thank you for the wisdom that's in your word. I thank you for the grace that's in your word. Father, I ask you to empower each one of us to minister grace to those in our sphere of influence. So many people around us, they don't know about your love, Father. They don't know about your forgiveness. They don't know about your joy and your peace. And so you do this deep work on the inside of us. You save us. You call us into your kingdom. You birth us as sons and daughters. You put your spirit in us. You bring your word alive in our hearts. You plant us in a local church. You give us teachers and leaders and you give us the fivefold ministry and you impart grace and you help us to identify the gifts that are in us and then you send us out to serve other people you're such a good god you're so worthy of our praise tonight one god three persons father son and holy spirit and so holy spirit we welcome you we welcome your teaching ministry we, met, we welcome your leadership, your guidance, your direction, your truth. We thank you for the prophetic gift. And we thank you that as you speak, that we will be built up, we will be strengthened, we will be edified, and we will be encouraged that we would bring glory to you, that we would be a people of wisdom and grace. And so we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother DeAnthony, good to see you. Amen. Minister Sabrina, good to see you. Amen. Deaconess Seon, good to see you. Got people just jumping on tonight. Come on, y'all. Let's go. Praise the Lord. Amen. So good to see everyone. Sister Rama, amen. So I am excited. If you have your Bibles tonight, if you could go to Matthew chapter 1. We're going to kind of toggle a little bit tonight between Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 1. And I just want to talk about from the few for a few minutes tonight that the grace that they needed to get through the situation was in God's word. The grace that they needed to get through the situation was in God's word. The grace that they needed to get through the situation was in God's word. Amen. So this is Matthew chapter one. We're going to read uh, starting at verse 18. Amen. It says, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, after he meditated on this, after he thought about it, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you, Joseph, are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. 
All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. The grace that they needed to get through the situation was in God's word. Amen. The Lord was fulfilling his word in Isaiah 7 and 14. Verse uh, 22 says, all this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God's with us. So notice that there were some things that were happening in the natural and these things that were happening in the natural that involved Mary and Joseph, they certainly didn't make sense from a natural perspective. It didn't make sense for Mary to be betrothed to another man and then God sovereignly choose her to carry the birth of his son, the Christ, who would eventually come and he would pay for our sins and die on the cross as an acceptable sacrifice for our sins. It didn't make sense for, again, to have Mary betrothed to someone and then have to try to explain this supernatural encounter that happened to her. And so you have the Lord trying to accomplish his will on one hand, and then you have these interesting details that are taking place in the natural on the other hand. And sometimes it can seem like, wow, this can kind of be overwhelming. This can kind of be a lot to process. This can kind of be a lot to take in. You know, can you imagine being Mary? If you flip over to Luke chapter one, it says in the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, Luke one and 26, it says God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. So God sends his angel and more important than this angelic experience is the word that he's going to send to help Mary walk through this season. Amen. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled, verse 29, at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to the son and he will be called Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the most high. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. Now that's a lot to hear. Amen. More than just you're going to give birth to a son. More than just amen. She's found favor Amen. But he begins to describe the nature and the stature of what who this child is and what he will become eventually as it relates to people. Verse 34. How will this be? Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin. Amen. Mary just had a sincere question. Amen. The Lord is not intimidated by our questions. The Lord is not overwhelmed by our questions. Sometimes we're overwhelmed by our questions. Sometimes if you're like me, we can overwhelm people with our questions. But our heavenly father, amen, our God, amen, is not overwhelmed with our questions, amen. The angel answered her because she asked, how can this be since I'm a virgin, since I've never known a man? The angel answered her, the Holy Spirit will come on you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who was said to be unable to conceive is in her sixth month, for no word from God will ever fail. Now, this is important, verse 37. No word from God will ever fail. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled to me. Then the angel left her.
Notice she listens to the word. She asks a question. The Lord gives her an answer and she decides to rest in his answer. She decides to put trust and faith and hope and security and rest in that answer. And notice what she says, right? The angel says, no word from God will ever fail. The Lord does not put any pressure on her to make this happen. He says, the Holy Spirit is going to overshadow you. The power of the Most High will come upon you and you will be impregnated. Now, this is all something that God is divinely doing because he has sovereignly chose her because he wants to. He has favored her. He has chosen her to carry the seed of his son. There's no pressure. Mary doesn't have to make anything happen. The only thing Mary has to do is simply receive the word. She just has to receive the word. And notice what she says in verse 38. I am the Lord's servant. And sometimes that's the kind of answer that the Lord is looking for. Instead of our soul creating more questions, instead of our mind, a man trying to ponder how is it going to happen, and not that those things are wrong, notice the position of rest she takes. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May your word be fulfilled to me. And because she takes the position of a servant, she puts all the pressure back on the Lord. She puts everything back on him. I am your servant. I'm just receiving from what you're saying. I'm not going to get into works. I'm not going to get into striving. I'm not going to get into how is this going to happen. Amen. Sometimes if you're anything like me, we can hear things and we can begin to think about, oh man, when's this going to happen? How is this going to happen? Am I going to have to make something happen? And we can get our minds going and we can get going all kinds of places. And instead of just resting, Instead of just taking the posture of a servant, instead of just embracing the word of the Lord with humility, we can let fear and anxiety and angst and turmoil and all these things happen. But she didn't take that position. She just decided to receive. Receiving is a choice. Receiving is a choice. She received, amen? Now she knew that when she had to tell Joseph, she knew that this was going to be hard to tell, much less is going to be hard for him to receive. But she didn't take that pressure on her. She just received what the Lord was said. And by faith, she became pregnant. By faith, as she received, see, first she got pregnant with the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord had faith. And when she received the word of the Lord and when she became pregnant with the word of the Lord, faith came alive on the inside of her. And as she received the word of the Lord, the Holy Spirit went to work and he imparted into her this divine seed. Say receiving is a choice. Amen. So Mary, so the Lord honored Mary's faith in his word. He gave her the gift of faith. The gift of faith was in the word. And as the word went forth, she received it. And as she received it, he honored her. Faith comes when God's word is being released. Supernatural ability comes when God's word is being released. Grace comes when God's word was being released. The grace they needed to get through the situation was in God's word. Amen. So Mary received God's word. Mary received the faith and the grace that she needed, not just to get pregnant, but to walk through this entire season. Amen. Now let's go back to Matthew chapter one. Amen. Because now what we have is God is fulfilling his word. And this is something that Matthew keeps hitting on. Amen. If you go back and if you read Isaiah chapter 7, you'll see that there was a king in Judah named Ahaz in the south. And he was being threatened by two other kings. And these kings were threatening to overtake him. And the Lord sent Isaiah to this king to encourage him. And he told the king to ask him for a sign. And the king said, I won't do that. I don't want to put pressure on you. I don't want to put pressure on God. I don't want to seem like I'm not. I don't have faith. And the Lord said, OK, I will give you a sign. And then he spoke these words about this virgin would conceive and give birth to a child. Amen. And 
the child will be called Emmanuel. Now, why does she have to be a virgin? And why can't she know a man? Why can't Joseph just get her pregnant? Because when Adam sinned, because the seed of humanity was inside of him and sin corrupted everything about him so that every time he reproduced, he passed that nature. If Joseph was to actually get Mary pregnant, amen, number one, this word about a virgin being conceived and giving birth, amen, wouldn't happen. Number two, his seed would be contaminated. And remember, Jesus is coming to save us from our sins, which means he must be sinless, which means he must be free of sin, amen. But he must also be a human. He must also be a man because Adam sinned as a man. So the Lord decides, listen, nobody else can do this but me. And since I'm the only one that can do it, I'm going to give Isaiah a word hundreds of years before this time. And then I'm going to fulfill this word through my ability by sending my angel with a word. I'm going to put faith and grace and hope in this word. I'm going to choose a person that's not perfect. Watch this. Mary wasn't perfect, but she was open. Man, Mary wasn't perfect, but she knew how to receive. Amen. Mary Mary may have not been perfect in everything. Amen. Mary was godly. Amen. Mary was righteous, but Mary knew how to receive. Amen. Do you know how to receive? Amen. The Lord chose her because she knew how to receive. He knew that once he sent his word and she asked her question that she would rest. Amen. And she would say, I'm the Lord's servant. Be it unto me as you said. Amen. So Mary gets in agreement with the Lord, but now Joseph needs to get an agreement with the Lord because the Lord is trying to fulfill his word, amen, because his Christ, his Messiah, his son, 29 years later, will go to the cross and will pay for the sins of humanity, amen, so Mary's on board, come on, say Mary's on board, amen, now we got to get brother Joseph on board, amen, <clears throat> God has many different ways to get people on board, Listen to me, family. We don't have to put the pressure sometimes that we put on ourselves to try to make other people believe, to try to make other people receive, to try to make other people accept. Some of us, one of the reasons we're stressed, one of the reasons we have headaches, one of the reasons we're anxious, one of the reasons we're in turmoil is because we're trying to make other people believe. We're trying to make our spouse believe. We're trying to make our children believe. And we're looking at their behavior and we're looking at the things that they do. And we're so caught up in what they're doing that we are not resting. We are not trusting in the Lord. We're not trusting in his word to do what we can't do. Only the word of the Lord can pierce the human heart. Only the word of the Lord can minister to the darkness and the unbelief. Only the word of the Lord has the ability to settle people. Only the word of the Lord has the ability to cause people to rest. Only the word of the Lord. And see, here's the thing about these angelic experiences. And this is why Paul told the Colossian church not to mess with people that worship these experiences because listen it wasn't about the angel it wasn't about Gabriel Gabriel listen the scripture says in Hebrews 1 that angels are ministering spirits sent to serve us who will inherit salvation so it was about the word of the Lord and I love it because the Lord has a tailor-made situation for each person he spoke to Joseph in one way Excuse me, he spoke to Mary in one way, and now he speaks to Joseph in another way. Amen? Notice this, amen. This is verse 18. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. So Mary comes to Joseph and says, I'm pregnant. And then <laughs> Joseph says, okay, I'm out. Amen. She says, I'm pregnant. He's like, I'm out. Amen. She's trying to explain this spiritual, supernatural experiences. He's like, listen, I love you, baby girl. I hear what you're saying, but nah, I'm out. Amen. I don't, I don't even need to know. Amen. I don't need to know the ins and the outs. I'm not dumb. You're not dumb. Amen. We know that those kind of things don't happen. So initially, he probably responded with unbelief. He was probably hurt. He was probably confused. He was probably embarrassed. Amen. I'm sure he had all kind of emotions going on. Amen. 
But notice we see his character in verse 19. But Joseph, her husband, but because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law, he was submitted to the word of God. He was submitted to the law of Moses. He was submitted to what God had said. Even though this may have rocked his world, he didn't let this rock him so much that he decided to give up on the word, that he decided to give up on God, that he didn't decide to give up on what God said. Amen. Notice as he pondered all these things. Amen. Yet he did not want to expose her to public public disgrace. Amen. Sometimes this would have seemed like this would have been a good place to get that get back. Amen. A good place to, amen, think about himself. Amen. A good place, right, to be so consumed, right, in humility. Consider others better than yourself. Amen. He was already acting like the Christ. He was already acting like the Messiah. He was already acting like the Son of God, even though he didn't know that the Son was coming and why he was coming. Mary was trying to explain it, and it probably was not going over well. Yet he did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. Amen. So he said, you know what? I'm not going to put her on blast. I'm not going to put her out here like this. Amen. I am just going to go with the flow. Amen. Notice the Lord does not jump in at this point. Amen. Mary tells him he doesn't really receive. So what does the Lord do? But after he had considered this, verse 20, the angel of the Lord appeared to him. Gabriel comes to him like Gabriel came to Mary. Listen, the Lord has an appointed time to get people's attention. And sometimes the Lord wants us to rest. He wants us to get out of the driver's seat, get in the passenger seat, just rest, just trust in what he's saying. Just let him do what he needs to do because we're not him. We can't change people. We can't make people. We can't fix people. Amen. We can share with people. We can testify to people. I had an opportunity today to testify to a person, to encourage them in the word of the Lord, to encourage them through what the Lord has done in me and my wife's life, to share our testimony. And this person, when they were talking, they were saying, man, you and your wife, you always look like you got it together. You always look like you don't have any problems. You don't, you always look like this. I said, that's grace. Amen. That's grace. Amen. We've walked through some things. We don't always have it together, but the word of the Lord, but faith, but rest. Rest looks good on you. Rest looks good on me. Amen. Striving doesn't look good on us. Amen. Anxiousness doesn't look good on us, but rest, trusting in the Lord, staying in our seated position, staying in a rested place as a servant, simply saying things like, I am your servant. Be it unto me as you have said. Lord, it's on you. Putting all the pressure back on God. Amen. Worshiping and honoring and praising. Amen. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Notice, amen, the Lord always deals with the root cause, amen. Sometimes the reason God wants us to rest is because he wants to go after the root cause. He doesn't want to go after the symptoms. He doesn't want to go after the manifestation. He doesn't want to go after the external. He wants to minister to us. He wants to expose the root cause so that we can come into a greater place place of rest. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you, Joseph, are to give him the name Jesus. Amen. We saw in Luke that the angel told her he will be called Jesus, but now he's telling Joseph, you are to give him the name Jesus. In other words, I want you to just walk with your wife in this season. I want you to just be there for her. I want you to just comfort her. I want you to encourage her. I I want you to be right there with her. Amen. You can't make this happen. Uh oh, watch this. You can't stop this from happening. I'm not asking you to do anything but walk with her. Believe me. Trust me. Walk with me. But watch this. The way you show that you believe me, the way that you show that you trust me, the way that you show that you honor me, the way that you show that you have faith in me, the way that you show that you are truly rested when it comes to me is walk with her, serve her, be with her, love her, support her, bless her, encourage her, amen, remind her, amen. I'm giving you this same experience so that you guys can mutually encourage each other with, eat with the word, so that you guys can mutually encourage each other with each other's faith, amen.
And you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. Listen, guess who he's going to save from their sins? Not just the people of Israel, not just the Gentiles, but he's going to save Mary and he's going to save Joseph. Amen. They don't know that they're going to have other children. They're going to have other sons and daughters. He's going to pay for their sins. He's going to bless their family. He's going to bless their extended family. He's going to bless the nations of the world. Amen. But that's years down the road. Amen. That part of the vision is 29 years down the road. Right now, we don't need to get into those details. We don't need to get lost in the weeds. We don't need to get lost in all the questions. Nothing wrong with all the questions. He just needed to be there. He just needed to love her. He just needed to support her. Amen. Again, all this took place. Why? To fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord commanded. Now we see Joseph mixing faith with the word. Joseph is at his own experience. He has been convinced in the dream that this experience is genuine. He has been convinced in the, his dream that this experience is real. He's not crazy. Gabriel confirms what he told Mary. And now Joseph enters rest. Now Mary is rested. Joseph is rested. They don't have to try to make anything happen. They now can enjoy watching the Son of God be formed in her belly. They can enjoy the process. They can enjoy each other's company. That Yes, they're going to have questions. Yes, they're going to wonder, man, how do we raise this child? Yeah, they're going to have all kinds of questions, but they don't have to let the questions overwhelm them. But he did not consummate their marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Say rest. Some of us, we just need to rest. Some of us, we just need to rest. You know, I believe that even, even rest will change how we shop and purchase Christmas gifts. You know, I believe that if we'll rest, it will change how we shop and purchase gifts. Amen. We might not always be trying to get the most expensive gift. But we might hear from the Lord, we might hear from the Lord what it is that that person really needs. If we'll rest, but if we're in our own strength, if we're striving, if we're trying to do it in our own ability, we can go out and spend all kind of money. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But sometimes when we rest, sometimes, that's right, that's good, Pastor. Am I a rested shopper? That's good. Amen. In this season, I know that, you know, some of us, maybe we've already uh, purchased gifts, but maybe for next year. Amen. Maybe for the next holiday, maybe for the next season, maybe for the next time. Amen. So we rest. Amen. So the Lord fulfilled his word according to his ability, according to his power, according to his promise. Amen. Number two, the Lord honors Mary's faith in his word. Number three, the Lord honors Joseph's faith in his word. And number four, Joseph and Mary grow in faith, confidence, and trust in the Lord because they put their trust in his word. You know, Mary was pregnant by faith for a season. Then she began to have morning sickness. And when the morning sickness started, I know she was like, oh my goodness, he's really in there. But before, the only thing she had to hold on to was the word. Joseph deciding to stay with her and having to answer for her being pregnant and having to deal with the looks and all those things and taking those looks, sometimes being a shield for her, sometimes a man not having to let people bring all those questions and do all those things. Those are the kind of things that show not just that we have faith and trust and confidence in the Lord, but that we can also do those things to honor each other. All they had was the word, friends. But all they needed was the word because the grace to get through the situation that they were in 
was given through the word. I'm so thankful for the gift of the Bible. I'm so thankful for the gift of God's word. We can trust in God's word, friends. We can celebrate the birth of the Christ. And notice, the Lord doesn't keep a little bit of drama from happening in the story. I think, I think the Lord likes to keep things interesting. I think the Lord likes to keep things kind of on the edge a little bit. Amen? He, he likes it a little spicy, amen? And even if the people around us don't understand or try to mock us or ridicule us or try to make fun of us or try to say all these things, we can trust in God's word. So the birth of the Christ tonight, the process of how he came here, the things that he would do when he got here, all of these things would happen as a result of trusting in the word. Right. He told him when he got here, he said, the son can do nothing of himself. He can only do what he sees his father doing. Jesus was always aligning himself with the word doing what the word said, even when he was misunderstood, right? Years later, he would be misunderstood by all kind of people. His parents went through that. God's grace helped them. You may be listening tonight and you may be in a season of your life where you're just really misunderstood. And maybe, you know, that misunderstanding is really trying to bring you down this holiday season. Maybe it's trying to steal your joy. Maybe it's causing you to second guess and question some things. I want to encourage you tonight. Trust in the word. Take the posture of Mary. If you have to say anything, say, I am the Lord's servant. Be it unto me. Take the posture of Joseph. If you have to do anything, just do what the word says and let the Lord take care of the rest. Take the posture of Mary and be a servant. If you have to say anything, say, I'm the Lord's servant. Let your word be fulfilled unto me as you have said. Take the posture of Joseph. Do what the Lord said and trust him with the results. Amen. Amen. Well, friends, we just wanted to encourage you a little bit tonight as we're celebrating the birth of the Christ. He's coming. He's Emmanuel. He is God with us. Amen. He was coming to give his life that we might have life. Amen. I'm so excited. Amen. For all that the Lord is doing. Amen. So Father, thank you for using this word to draw people to you. Thank you for encouraging us. Thank you for helping us to mix faith with your word. Help us to receive the gift of faith and grace that are built into your word. And I thank you that no matter where those who are listening or will listen are on their journey, I pray that they would be so encouraged by what they hear that they would be driven to spend more time in your word, develop a more intimate and personal relationship with you, receive your grace, help us to turn away from our sin, to turn fully towards you, to receive your love, that we might love you with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength that we might love ourselves and that we might serve our neighbors with the love that you have for us. Sometimes that love takes the place of service. Sometimes that love takes the place of telling the truth. Sometimes that love causes us to just be patient. However you manifest it, however you lead us, help us to be faithful and to honor that leading that you would be glorified. In Jesus name, amen. Amen. Well, family, again, thank you for jumping on with us tonight. I pray that you were encouraged by what you heard. I encourage you to go back, you know, read these stories, Matthew 8, uh, Matthew 1, 18 through 25 and Luke 1, 26 through 28. See what the Lord says to you. Just because we sign off, amen, that doesn't mean the Lord doesn't have more that he wants to say to you, amen. We share what we hear, but the Lord has more that he wants to give. So make time for the word and let the Lord speak to you, amen. We're excited, amen. Join us, amen, Saturday morning at 10 a.m. Come and see. We are celebrating the birth of the Christ, amen, and we want you to be a part of what the Lord is doing. So if you can be there, amen, join us, amen, at 10 a.m., 2450 Delhi Commerce Drive, Hope, Michigan, 48842, Advancing God's Kingdom. We call it AGK. We would love to have you there, amen. We'll be having some light snacks afterwards, and we'll just celebrate the birth of the Christ, and we're going to impart a gift into you that you can take and actually share with your family on 
uh, Christmas morning. So again, um, if you have an opportunity, invite people out. We'd love to have you come and worship with us. And so we love you guys. Blessings. And we look forward to seeing you. Amen. If you have been blessed by tonight's word and you would like to be a financial blessing, amen, we have three ways that you can give. Uh, the first way is our cash app, dollar sign, advancing God's kingdom, all one word, amen. The other way is you can go to our website, agkm.net forward slash give, and you can give one time or reoccurring depending on how the Lord leads you. We thank you, everybody that is sowing into our ministry. We thank you for your faithfulness in terms of your financial contributions. And man, we desire to be a good steward and to manage well what the Lord has given us. And so we thank you for partners. We thank you for those that the Lord would speak to that would partner with us so that we can keep sharing the gospel so that we can keep sowing and meeting needs as the Lord leads us, amen. So we love you guys. We're excited to have you here. And remember again, the grace that they needed to get through the situation was in the word, amen. But it's not just a word heard, amen. We have to mix faith with the word, even in the midst of the challenges, amen. The word, listen, the word doesn't, doesn't challenges don't stop because the word comes, but the word comes to help us walk through the challenges by faith through grace, amen. Well, friends, we love you tonight. It's so good to see you guys. I pray that everybody is having a great week. It sounds like a little snow might be coming, so just be safe when you're out there. Amen. If you need to get some things, and let's be wise, and let's just make good decisions so that we can be together safely. Amen. Again, hopefully we'll see you Saturday morning, 10 a.m. Amen. We love you guys. Merry Christmas. Amen. Give Jesus away. Amen. This is the last thing I'll say. Give Jesus away. So many people right next to us are looking for Jesus. Amen. And we don't have to be weird and we don't have to be over the top. If we'll just start a conversation and if we'll be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, you never know how the Lord will use us and what he's done to win people's hearts to him in this season. Give Jesus away. He doesn't want to stay in the box. He doesn't want to stay in the wrapping paper. Amen. He wants to be given away because he is the gift that just keeps on giving. Amen. So, friends, we've got an assignment. Amen. That grace is in you. That faith is in you. Amen. If you have given yourself to Christ, give the gift of Jesus away. He wants to be given away. He does not want to stay wrapped up. He does not want to stay in the box. Amen. Well, friends, we love you guys. Blessings. We look forward to seeing you. Amen. Sister Adrian, good to see you tonight. Amen. I feel like, uh, Sister Adrian, I just see that you're in a new season. And I just really uh, sense in my heart that uh, the Lord is saying that um, there's just some opportunities. I just see some opportunities opening up for you. And I just heard that this is a time for relationships. Um, I just see that the Lord is saying that... Um, there's just going to be some new relationships, uh, some new opportunities, some new doors. Uh, the Lord wants you to lean into some new relationships. And I just heard that the Lord wants to refresh you in these new relationships. It's time for some, it's time to release some relationships so that you can come into some refreshing relationships. Amen. It's time to release so that you can receive. Amen. And so, Father, I just thank you for the grace that you give your daughter, our sister, to release so that she can receive because it's a season of relationships and refreshing for her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Sister Pam, Merry Christmas to you too. Amen. We love you and we thank the world of you. Amen. So again, friends, we love you guys and we will see you soon and blessings. Amen. <laughs> the Lord is good. Merry Christmas, my friends. Release to receive. Let's go, Minister Michelle. See, I'm trying to go. Sister Rebecca, amen. I'm trying to go, but amen. It's good to see everybody tonight. Amen. Blessings, and we love you guys.